Hello, so today we're going to be talking about Jewelry, Bonnie, and her historic pirate inspiration, and Bonnie. This is a series that I do on my channel, a very unpopular series, but one that I continue to do because I personally enjoy it, uh, where I look at One Piece pirates and their historic companions. Pirates like Roger, Blackbeard, uh, Kuma. I did one on Kuma. I personally really enjoy studying pirate history. I love looking into the pirate legends, what they did, what's documented, what's embellished, what has no actual backing whatsoever other than just we all kind of theorize. I think it's really fun to see what these pirates were truly up to and what we know of them. And as I've mentioned in other pirate uh, history videos, we don't know a lot. <laughs> pirates were not well-documented historical figures at all, and there was a ton of embellishing. Like, for instance, did you know that Blackbeard was said to have, after he died and had his head cut off, his body then jumped the ship and swam laps around the ship, the ship a few times before it finally sank down, and then they used his head as a prize. I think that's amazing. Probably didn't happen, but it's pretty funny. And Bonnie is another one of those pirates that really just is not well documented at all, but Oda clearly took strong inspiration from her, from her baseline personality that is said to be had to her character design. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Just know that this particular pirate history video is going to be even more so based on legend than fact than the ones previous, because again, she just was not well documented. So, Anne Bonny. Anne Bonny was born of a wealthy lawyer and his maid. His wife was away. I think she was sick actually <laughs> getting care and he had uh, an affair. And when wife came home and learned about the pregnancy, she wasn't thrilled, so she decided to leave again and left Anne's uh, father and mother to raise the baby. Anne's mom died when she was very young and she was raised by her father. Almost everything that I've just told you is more than likely just legend and not factual at all. We have no idea who her, who her parents were. But supposedly her dad hid her identity and dressed her up as a boy and called him Andy, called her Andy and raised her up to be the heir of his business. Which brings us to our first correlation. Anne's father hid her away uh, for his reasoning. I don't actually know what it would have been, but Kuma's was because, you know, of the disease that she had inherited from her mother. Next correlation is in physical appearance. So Aunt Bonnie was known to be a fiery redhead with a hot temper. The red hair has never been confirmed and she very well may have not had red hair at all. But that's the legend. Some fun anecdotes that go along with this reputation is that she once had a maidservant who annoyed her, so she stabbed her. Another time, a man tried to rape her, so she beat him until he was hospitalized for weeks. And there was also the one time that she supposedly set fire to her father's plantation because she was mad at him. Anyway, Anne got married to a merchant named James Bonney, and they went off to a pirate haven called the Republic of Pirates, where uh, he worked as a merchant for a while, and she drank at the taverns for a while, made friends with a lot of pirates. Then when a uh, new governor, Woods Rogers, uh, got elected, James Bonney supposedly became an informant for him. Therefore, he sold out some of the pirates that they had befriended, which Ann Bonney didn't love. Also, she fell in love with a pirate. His name was Calico Jack. Well, his, his alias was Calico Jack and Jack, offered James Bonney a good size bribe to get him to divorce Anne so that she could marry Calico Jack. Uh, James Bonney refused and then they just ran off together and left him penniless. So Anne, much like Bonnie, set sail to the seas under disguise. Our Bonnie is disguised as an adult when in fact she is a child, and Bonnie was disguised as a man when in fact she was a woman, kind of harkening back to being disguised as a boy growing up, I suppose. Let's keep talking about appearance because there's more correlations than just that she's a fiery redhead with a hot temper. She, her, the main photo that is used to depict and Bonnie goes along really well with how Oda depicted her. A General History of Pirates depicts her in a men's blouse, a blazer, and long trousers. And you can kind of see how loosely Jewelry Bonnie's outfit matches what Anne Bonnie was kind of known to wear. Just a version that maybe a kid put on and then an adult grew up into. 
But this is my favorite part. So she was known to be a fearsome, cutthroat, ruthless pirate, as many were. And she, as I said, would dress as a man and would fight alongside the men. But when she actually got it close to issue and attack, she would pull her shirt open to expose her breasts to... So it's speculated by some that she did it to shock her enemy so that they like they had a second of pause and then she would take advantage of that second of pause but other people speculate and say that the reason is because she wanted to shame and humiliate them in their last moments realizing that they're being taken down by a woman which i also really love either way she was said to have that fighting style where she looked like a man fighting among men but would expose that she was a woman right before taking down her opponent this might cause you to remember that there really weren't very many known female pirates. Why? Why were there not so many? And more importantly, why was Anne Bonny allowed to roam with the men when so few women were? Well, Anne was known to, if anyone questioned her, if anyone said, ah, oh, it's bad luck to have a woman aboard, or whatever, if anyone, if anyone questioned why she deserved to be there, she was known to stab them through the heart and throw them into the water. So people stopped questioning her. And from my readings of pirate history, it seems like that kind of command is kind of typical for the, those that are able to keep their command or able to last a long time, especially women. One of the greatest pirate queens in all of history, Cheng Shi, one of my favorites that I've studied, um, was, oh, she, you, you ask a question, you get beheaded. It was, you, we, we don't question her. But in fact, there were two female pirates on Calico Jack's crew, both of which would disguise themselves as men and supposedly both of which didn't even know the other was a woman for a while. So her name was Mary, the other female pirate was named Mary Reed and both of them were women disguised as men and apparently did the job so well that they knew each other, they revealed to each other that they were both women. But Calico Jack was said to have been so jealous of their relationship, of their friendship, that he uh, thought that something was going on. And so Anne Bonnie had to reveal to him that that's a, she, she's a girl too. There's also speculation that Anne and Mary had a relationship between the two of them as well, but that I think is all speculation. I don't think there's actually any record of that. Even the documents that have essentially been discredited. Another fun thing about Anne is that she did turn up pregnant one time while on the ship with, uh, with Calico Jack and the people. So Jack dropped her off in Cuba where she had the baby, left the baby, and then got back to a pirating. Nobody knows what happened to this baby. Some people like to say that she left it with family, but more than likely she didn't. I like to think, and I could be totally off base here, it's very clear that uh, Jewelry Bonnie was modeled after Anne Bonnie, however loosely, in appearance and in temperament. I like to think that possibly Oda also pulled a little bit from Anne Bonny's story in creating Ginny. Anne Bonny, despite having a fiery temper, was also said to be a good catch. She was thought of as someone who, you know, might calm down with domestic life and was of a good background, despite the scandal attractive, came from some measure of wealth with her father. So she was, she probably had a decent amount of suitors and probably her father tried to get her to have a better match than James Bonney, which is who she ran off with. Ginny is depicted as being very well sought after and having many opportunities for suitors, but she chose the penniless, well, in, in Anne Bonney's case, she chose the penny, penniless merchant and in, uh, Ginny's case, she chose the penniless pastor. Alongside that, one of the notes of her temperament was, again, that someone tried to rape her and she beat him so bad that he was hospitalized for a few weeks. And Ginny's story does go that way. I actually speculated after she was captured that I wondered if we were going to get the reveal that before she was discarded, before she was let go to die to the sun, uh, talking about Ginny, that she may be beat up the man who captured her and, you know, enslaved her. But we never actually got that lore. We still might, I guess. Anyway, that may not happen, but that speculation specifically came from Anne Bonnie's story. I just thought it would be cool if Oda wanted to include that. And naturally, Anne Bonnie sailed to a specific location to leave her baby and then, and then go back to a pirating and the more wholesome 
side of that story is what Oda did with Ginny, where Ginny sailed across the ocean, sacrificing what little life she had left to be exposed to the sun so that she could get her daughter in the hands of Kuma. That's not what Aunt Bonnie did, but she did bring her daughter to a location and then, you know, had had to leave her. Again, this isn't nearly as solid as the comparisons with Anne Bonnie and Jewelry Bonnie, but I just wanted to throw it out there. I like to think that Oda kind of pulled from Anne Bonnie a little bit for Ginny as well, but I mean, who knows? Anyway, Calico Jack's story as well as his crew's stories ended in the way many pirate stories end, which is that they were captured. Woods Rogers sent a ship to attack them and they were said to all be so blindly drunk that they couldn't even fight back. And in fact, all the men just stayed below deck. Anne and Mary had their senses about them and fought for the crew, but couldn't do all the fighting on their own. So Anne was said to have uh, called below deck shouting at the men, telling them to come aboard and fight with them, but they ignored her. So she just started shooting at them, her own men, her own crew. She was mad at them for not fighting with her. And so she just shot them, killed one, injured a few. Anyway, they were all captured and set to be hanged. And they all were hanged, except for Mary and Anne who pled the belly, which is a term that means that they said that they were pregnant. And so their hanging was postponed until they were to have the babies and then they would be hanged. Mary ended up getting a sickness and died in her cell and Anne disappeared from history. Now, once again, there is speculation and there are rumors. Some say that she too died in her cell. Some say that she got away and continued a pirating under a new alias. And some say that she got away, but her father paid her her bail and then married her off to a nice man and she became a nice domestic lady with 10 kids. She had the one baby that was abandoned, then she had the other baby because apparently the pregnancy was real, although probably not, probably she just lied. And then she had eight more kids with the new guy and lived a happy little domestic life. Most people don't think that that one's true. <laughs> anyway, I wanna end on the note that has nothing to do with Joey Bonnie, but I just think it's really funny. So again, Anne and Mary fought alone when they were captured and all the men stayed drunk below decks. So <laughs> when they were all captured and they were all imprisoned and set to be hanged, it is said that Anne's last words to her husband, to the man who turned her into pirate into a pirate, the man who she sailed with and lived her life with, her last words to him were, if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't have to die like a dog. One might say that she was a little bit angry <laughs> that, that they had to fight alone and were captured when possibly they could have defended themselves if they all weren't, you know, drunk out of their minds. Anyway, I love Anne Bonnie's story, even though who knows how much of it is real. And I love looking into historical pirates, even though we can verify so little of what we think we know about them. And I love comparing them to One Piece characters. For those of you who do enjoy watching these videos, I hope you enjoyed this one too, even though it was far more leaning into speculation than most of these videos do. Feel free to chat with me more about it in the comments if you made more connections to Anne Bonnie and Jewelry Bonnie than I did. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the book channel, which is always linked in the description. I'll see you again soon. Bye.